Buildings. Buildings play a fundamental role in our social fabric, and we all interact with them. But did you know that buildings represent as much as 40% of global energy used, and as much as one-third of global greenhouse gas emissions? This is a figure that needs reflection. And even more so for us, as Mauritius, and as a small island developing state, we are on the front line of climate change. We are already seeing the impacts on our coast. And in fact, it is estimated that as the sea water level rises by two meters, we are set to lose over 1,030 hectares of land. That's an awful lot, because that represents potential residential capacity for over 30,000 people. That's one-fifth of the population of our capital city. This trend is terrifying. And as such, it is not advisable, but it is immoral, social, and ethical imperative that we turn towards more sustainable building practices. And in turn, showcase a model of change and leadership that will not only save, but also preserve the beautiful assets of our country. But now, don't get me wrong. Sustainability doesn't need to be a costly or highly technical endeavor. It could simply mean turning towards resources that were already there at our disposal for thousands of years. And what if this alternative was rammed earth? A building technique that has passed the test of time and which can be seen in several parts around the world. Like in Yangshai, China, 5,000 years BC, the Great Wall of China, which we all know, Alhambra in Spain, the Church of the Holy Cross in the US, and there are others more recent examples all around the world. But what is Ramdev? It's actually quite simple. It's very basic, made only with three components. First, soil, which we all have around us. Second, a binding component, cement, a very minor fraction of cement, or clay, like we use traditionally, or we can also use lime or asphalt emulsions. And third, aggregate, grass, bagasse, or gravel. And it's quite simple. We use that mixture with a specific proportion, and we place it in the formwork. And the tool, very basic. That's all that you need, a simple wooden piece of branch. And this action is called ramming. It may look labor intensive, but really it's not. What I'm doing is I'm only lifting the piece of wood and letting it go. The weight of the wood is doing all the work for me, and compaction. And ram is actually compacting layers of soil over layers of soil. And that's the exact same way that is being done for over thousands of years. And women, men, and children equally have been involved in the construction practice of their house. That's true community building exercise. And it's not only built on a residential scale. Entire cities have been built with this. I love this picture. This is a picture of Sana, a city in Yemen. What you are actually seeing is 6,000 multi-storied houses built with rammed earth. And it's gorgeous. Look at that. You can see the architectural complexity and the intricacy in design and ornamentation, all with rammed earth. And this has been done 2,500 years ago. Can you imagine that? And it's now a World UNESCO Heritage, Heritage Site. But what about today, in 2016? How do we do it? With the modern world, everything is now mechanized, and so is the built industry. With rammed earth, the mixture is being done by machines. The ramming process by mechanical tampers. And you'll be surprised. A whole house of rammed earth will take you only two to three days. Two to three days, can you imagine that? As opposed to what we know in Mauritius, a conventional house here takes you several weeks, if not several months. It's not only fast, but it's beautiful. Like I said, Ram Duff is compacting layers on top of layers. And if you want to play with the tones and the colors, you can simply change the soil type or add color additives to the mix. And your house or your wall becomes unique. It becomes a piece of sculpture. It has its own character. Imagine living in a house like that. It's a very homely feeling. It's not only beautiful to look at, but it's also, architecturally speaking, very flexible. This is a house in Wanaka, in New Zealand. And the architect shows that beautifully. What we are seeing right now is actually vertical rammed earth walls with horizontal hidden steel tressers, covered by wooden planks and adorned by glass facades. It works beautifully. 
and it's not only flexible, but it lasts. As a matter of comparison, asphalt has a lifespan of 15 years of age. A simple timber-framed house, 49 years without decay. The conventional house, like we know in Mauritius, block and cement, 100 years without decay. And rammed earth, 1,000 years. 1,000 years, can you imagine that? That's 10 times more than what we are ex experiencing right now. And look at those walls, it's actually textured, and that's what makes it all the more special. That textured wall is actually showing the semi-permeability of the material. The wall breathes in and out. And that make makes it perfect, not only to regulate heat, but also humidity, which is a perfect place for people with asthmatic conditions to live in. And in terms of sustainability, in embodied energy, that wall holds three times less embodied energy than a conventional wall. So three times more sustainable. But people keep asking me, do we have enough soil in Mauritius? And to answer that, this is a picture of the Citadel Hill, a very small hill in the middle of the capital city. And that landmass actually accommodates for 2.3 million tons of soil. If we were to use that amount of soil for housing units, we'll actually achieve 48,000 housing units, only with that small landmass. And that's a lot, because that represents 13% of our actual housing mix in Mauritius. But before you jump out of your seats, I'm not saying we have to pull down the Stadel Hill. This is just as a matter of scale. If this is small landmass, can accommodate for 13% of what we have right now, imagine the potential. And that availability of land is actually what makes this technique very, very cheap. In terms of cost, like I said, it's a true community building exercise. If you can convince your friends and your family to come and help you to build your house with the current market rates in Mauritius, you'll be achieving savings of up to 73% as opposed to a conventional house. But of course, we're all busy with our lives nowadays. If you are to hire people to do it for you, you'll still be doing savings of up to 44%. But now, of course, you'll tell me, this is so cheap, but that surely must come at a cost. Is it risky? But no, it's not a risky or daring endeavor. People have been doing it for thousands of years, and people are still doing it nowadays. And examples can be seen in the USA, in Australia, in Burundi, in Mexico, in Portugal, in Spain, in Austria, in Bangladesh, amongst others. And those are not only limited to residential housing units. They range from, the, from one purpose to the next. This picture, what we're seeing right now in Bangladesh, is actually a school, and it works perfectly. But now, we have a question of significant magnitude, and yet astonishing in simplicity. If this construction technique is more sustainable, more durable, and cheaper, why don't we do it here in Mauritius? I certainly acknowledge one limitation, and that lies in the lack of an earthen construction code. But that can easily be solved. Action is eloquence. And indeed, we need to kickstart into action. Let's start the groundwork and study our geography and climate and devise the perfect rammed earth mixture for our buildings in our context. And this assignment lies within the capable minds of local architects, engineers, designers, urbanists, scientists, and others in the built industry. We need to move towards a more responsive and intelligent approach to building and planning. And we need to move towards solutions that are both efficient and problem-solving. What we need today is a creative revolution. Thank you.